But first, a second woman has accused Georgia Republican Senate nominee Herschel Walker of pressuring her to have an abortion, this time back in 1993. Walker, who publicly opposes abortion rights, had previously been accused by an ex-girlfriend of doing the same thing in 2009. The news broke as the former football star appeared with South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham during a campaign stop in Dillard, Georgia, Wednesday afternoon. Walker denied both claims at the event, referring to the allegations as foolishness. I would just say right now, you know, guys, I'm done with this foolishness. I've already told people this is a lie and I'm not going to entertain because you continue to carry a lie alone. In April of 1993, our client learned that she was pregnant. She was surprised. She had been on birth control throughout their entire relationship. When she told Mr. Walker that she was pregnant, he seemed shocked. She didn't know what to do. Mr. Walker clearly wanted her to have an abortion and convinced her to do so. Our client alleges that Mr. Walker gave her cash to pay for the abortion and that she went to a clinic in Dallas, Texas. However, while she was at the clinic, she became overwhelmed with emotion. She could not go through with it and she left the clinic in tears. When Mr. Walker called that and pressured her to go back to the clinic with him the next day to go through with the abortion. The following day, Mr. Walker drove her to the clinic and waited in the parking lot for hours until the abortion was completed and she came out. I really didn't know what to do. I was confused, uncertain, and scared. After discussing the pregnancy with Herschel several times, he encouraged me to have an abortion and gave me the money to do so. I went to a clinic in Dallas, but I simply couldn't go through with it. I left the clinic in tears. When I told Herschel what had happened, he was upset and said that he was going to go back with me to the clinic the next day for me to have the abortion. He then drove me to the clinic the following day and waited for hours in the parking lot until I came out. He then drove me to get medications and supplies as prescribed and then drove me home. I was devastated because I felt that I had been pressured into having an abortion. After the abortion, I felt that Herschel began distancing himself from me. I fled Dallas within days after the abortion and did not go back to even visit for the next 15 years because I was so traumatized by what Herschel had put me through. And there it is. Yet another woman has come forward accusing the purported pro-life Herschel Walker of pressuring her to get an abortion. This during an affair that Walker had from 1987 to 1993. Because remember, when politicians lecture you on morality and family values, make sure it's the ones who can't stop having affairs and being hypocrites on the issue of abortion. And just in case you thought that this was some October surprise by a Democrat operative, the woman at the heart of this accusation voted for Trump in 2016 and 2020. The reason she came forward isn't because she's some liberal, it's because she knows who Herschel Walker is and saw him lying about exactly that. She said, quote, particularly I saw him state that the woman's claims were not true because he never signed any cards using the letter H. I knew that was not true because he had often signed letters to me using H. And on the off chance that you don't believe what this woman is alleging? You don't have to look far for proof because attorney Gloria Allred's announcement came with the receipts, namely a voicemail recording from 1992 from Herschel Walker himself. I was thinking about you. Uh, I don't know what I did. This is terrible. I'm calling from a uh, restaurant. They're the one who's got a phone that I can use that you can put something in and be able to call out. All the other phones, you have to have a, some kind of telecom card or something. I have the slightest idea what it is. But I wanted to call you on your machine and try to talk to you. What I can do is I'm going to try to call you back while I'm here, but I have to call you like early in the morning because it's late at night there when uh, I'm up and the restaurant is open. But I keep trying to call you. I want to say I love you. Okay. For those of you who may have had a little difficulty hearing it, I'll be happy to tell you what it said. Hello there, my dear. Sorry I didn't call you when I first got here, but it's been a pain. I waited six and a half hours at the airport till Edwin and Brian picked me up. We got here to this dump of a place. 
It's a ski lodge like place. No phones in the room, no TV in the room, four people to the room, which is smaller than your TV, where your TV is at in the kitchen, put together, I think. And it's a dump. But I want to say, I love you. And I was thinking about you. I don't know what I did that's terrible. I'm calling from a restaurant. They're the ones who's got a phone that I can use that you could put something in and be able to call out. All the other phones, you have to have some kind of telecom card or something like that. The size I do what it is, but I wanted to call you on your machine and try to talk to you. What I can do is I'm gonna try to call you back while I'm here, but I have to call you like early in the morning cause it's late at night there when uh, I'm up and the restaurant is open, but I keep trying to call you. I wanna say, I love you. Okay, bye.